Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have an indefinite integral of e raised to the sine inverse of x dx. And this integral was inspired by a loyal subscriber who was working on this problem. And just to keep in mind, I made it an indefinite integral. If it's going to be a definite integral, then you have to make sure that the integrand and everything that you do is well defined on those limits of integration. All right, if you want to pause the video, try it on your own. I'll give you a hint, though. You need about two different integration techniques to get through this problem. Okay, so you have a couple paths you could take. You could start off doing integration by parts first, and then that would lead you to doing a substitution and integration by parts again. It's a little bit cleaner if you do a substitution first. So that, I'm going to show you the cleanest method. So we're going to start off and let x equal sine of t, all right? And then differentiating both sides, that means dx is cosine t dt. So now I wanna rewrite this entire integral all in terms of t. So we have here e raised to the sine inverse of sine of t, because I'm replacing x with sine of t. And then dx is gonna be all of this stuff here, cosine t dt. All right, now, as long as sine of t, this quantity here, is within the domain of sine inverse, then this composition is well-defined, and I can just rewrite everything as e. This will simplify to just t, e raised to the t, times cosine of t dt. How are we doing? Okay, excellent. And then hopefully at this point, You've done enough integrals that you recognize, okay, when we have the product of some exponential function and either sine or cosine, it's going to boomerang, meaning it's going to take two rounds of integration by parts, and we're going to get back the original integrand. That's because the derivatives of e to the t are cyclical. They don't change. It's always e to the t. And then the derivatives of cosine t also repeat. So in this case, you could do the tabular method. I'll show you both actually if you want. So if we call this our integral i, okay, let me set up by parts. And when you know it's gonna boomerang, it actually doesn't matter which one's u and which one's dv, just so long as you're consistent through both the rounds. I'll show you exactly what I mean right now. So say I let u be e to the t, then dv would be cosine t dt. And then du is e to the t dt, and V antiderivative of cosine T is sine T. So then I, my integral, this antiderivative that I'm trying to find, is equal to, by our biparts formula, E to the T sine T minus integral of this product here, which is very good, E to the T sine T dT. Beautiful. Now it takes one more round and notice in the first round, since I let u be the exponential function, I need to let u bar be the exponential function again. And then dv bar is going to be sine t dt. And then du bar e to the t dt. v bar would be negative cosine t, antiderivative of positive sine t. Okay. So don't forget, I, my integral, is equal to e to the t sine t minus, and then all of this I'm going to replace with the biparts formula. So we have as follows, negative e to the t cosine t minus integral of this product here, which is negative e to the t cosine t. So that's going to make this positive e to the t cosine t dt. How are we doing? And then this is like the great moment where the boomerang has returned to us. Do you notice? How did we define i? i is antiderivative of e to the t times cosine t dt. Here it is coming back home. So you can replace all of this with i. Yes? Okay, so then I have my original integral i equals e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t minus i, right? This minus sign is distributed. Beautiful. Now you just treat i like some variable you're solving for. 
So move it over to the left. So 2i is e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t. Isolate it completely. So i is 1 half. Let me factor out e to the t. And then you just have sine t plus cosine t. And then here's that awkward moment. You just have to, on your own, remember to put plus c. Okay. Now we're not done. Because remember, the original variable in the problem was not t. It was x. So we got to get back there. So what was the substitution that we had made? Well, we said that we let x equal sine t, okay? And notice here we have just e raised to the t. So sine inverse or arc sine of x is going to be t. I can go ahead and replace that accordingly. So let's hop to it. We have 1 half e raised to the sine inverse of x times sine of, instead of t, sine inverse of x plus cosine of sine inverse of x plus c. And we need to simplify this completely. So as long as sine inverse of x is within the domain of sine, domain of sine is all real numbers, right? So we're good there. This will just give us back x plus now, cosine of sine inverse of x, that's a little trickier. You can't do that right off the top of your head unless maybe you've done it so frequently you've memorized it. Now, anytime you see an inverse trig function, that represents some angle. So in this particular case, sine inverse of x is equal to t. Sine of t is equal to x. We can draw a triangle that represents this relationship. t would be the angle. And we know that sine of t, the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse side, is x. So think of x as x over 1, opposite over hypotenuse. Using the Pythagorean theorem, that missing side is the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then here now I can simplify because I'm trying to find what is cosine of, this is just t, yes? So cosine of t is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared plus c, like that. So that's our final answer, completely simplified. I like leaving this factored outside, but if you're really inclined and you want to distribute it through, I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine. I'll let you live your life. Um, and then I did mention you can do the boomerang problem using the tabular method. So let me just show you how that would unfold. So the boomerang part started when we were just trying to like evaluate right here, e to the t cosine t dt, right? Option two, once you make it this far, you know, option two. So you still make one column that you're going to differentiate, one column that you're going to integrate. And again, it doesn't really matter which is which. Now, normally when we do tabular, we differentiate until we get a zero. That won't happen here. So I like to pick the one that changes because e to the t won't change. So we'll have cosine t, and I'm going to keep differentiating until I get back some form of the original function cosine t. So then derivative would be negative sine t, and then one more derivative is negative cosine t. So I'm stopping there, and then e to the t, I'm going to keep integrating, e to the t, e to the t. Now I stop. So the process is as follows. You still do this diagonal product and this diagonal product with the alternating signs, so positive, negative, and then don't add any extra signs. You're going to integrate this product here. Okay, and if you haven't seen the tabular method before, I'll link a video in the description where I break it down. And I even show boomerang problems like this as well. So then you can rewrite that this integral, e to the t cosine t dt equals, we have this product here. So that's e to the t cosine t. Here's a negative times another negative. So that's gonna make this positive e to the t sine t, and then we integrate this horizontal product, very similar to when you just do normal by parts, right? Um, and don't add or change any of the signs. So this is a negative times a positive, so it's going to be minus integral e to the t cosine t, and just don't forget to put dt. And then we're at the same place. Like notice, this is my integral i, 
this is I, this is I, just for simplicity. And then you have 2i equals e to the t cosine t plus e to the t sine t, and then divide by 2, voila. And then I, I, I do like factoring this out, don't you? I don't know. All right, that's it. And then from there, you can go back and finish the problem the rest of the way. You know, the tabular is quite nice, just so long as you remember exactly how it works. If you had put e to the t in this column, that's fine. You just wouldn't know how far to go. So then you would put cosine t here and then just keep integrating until you get back some version of cosine t. Till your boomerang comes back, that's the main idea, okay? So anyways, let's go back to the final answer. Did you get it? If you did integration by parts first, then you do a uh, U sub, and then you're gonna have to do the boomerang thing again. So I felt like that was a whole extra step. This is the least amount of steps. But let me know in the comments down below if you did something differently. Did you enjoy it? And if you have suggestions for integrals, you can always send them in. I give priority to channel members and whatnot, but of course, happy to oblige any requests. If you're working on sequences and series, I have a whole playlist of that for you and I'll work on another series of the day. And I'm finishing up the video lectures for linear algebra as well. So much new content coming soon. So make sure you're subscribed, turn on your notifications. Thank you guys for your support. Love you so much. Bye.